Hi there guys and this week I've got an extra video for you which is all about emulating a Raspberry Pi using QMU in Linux. I was hoping to get this video out a few days earlier than I have but with all the things happening over Christmas I've been a little bit slow and anyway it's here now so let's get to it and emulate a Raspberry Pi. Ok guys, so in this video you're going to learn how to install a virtual Raspberry Pi using QMU running on Linux. For you guys watching who already have a Linux system already set up, whether it be a physical Linux system or a virtual Linux system, then please skip through to the next section of the video at the 2 minutes and 5 seconds mark of this video. So in this first part of the video I'm going to quickly set up a Fedora VM running on my Unraid server because whilst reading the Unraid forums the other day, I saw a lot of people wanted to emulate a Raspberry Pi. And unfortunately, at present, December 2016, Unraid doesn't have support for ARM emulation. But other Linux distros do support it. So if we want to run it on Unraid, why don't we just set up a Linux VM and then run the Raspberry Pi on top of that? So yes, it's not directly running on Unraid, but it's still giving us a slice of that Raspberry Pi on our Unraid server. So I'm going to very quickly set up a Fedora VM, I'm going to call it Pi Fedora, I'll give it a nice Raspberry Pi logo, give it some CPUs and I'm going to give it some memory and I'm going to give it a 20 gig virtual hard disk and then choose my install ISO here. I know I'm going through this extremely quickly but this isn't a tutorial about how to set up a Linux VM. It's just something that we need to have before we get on to the main part of the tutorial. And by the way, you don't have to set up a Fedora VM, you can set up any Linux VM you want. It's just that I prefer Fedora as my Linux distro of choice. Okay, so here we are. So log into your Fedora or your Linux distro. And then the first thing we're going to have to do is to install QMU. So open a terminal window and then type in sudo space yum space install space qmu and this will download and install all of the files necessary to run qmu on our Fedora Linux system. And just here just type y for yes to continue downloading all the files. And when it says complete, then QMU is successfully installed onto our system, so we can now close the terminal window and go on to the next step. So next we need to download a few things from the description. So open up a browser, mine's Firefox here, and then copy and paste the link in the description to download Raspberry and Wheezy, and paste it in here. And that will bring you to the final version that was made of Raspberry and Wheezy. Um, the date is 2015-0217. So just click on this link here to download. And yes, Wheezy isn't the latest version of Raspbian, but hey, please don't be tempted to download Jesse thinking that's going to be better, because the kernel that we use to boot it isn't actually compatible with Jesse, and as far as I know, there isn't actually one that's been compiled that is. So for present, we just have to use Wheezy. Okay, so that might take a few minutes to download. So while that's going, let's download the kernel and the scripts that we're going to need. So copy and paste the second link in the description, and this is downloading from my Dropbox account, so it may ask you if you want to sign into your Dropbox, but just click no and continue to download it straight to your computer. And once this is downloaded, it will leave you with two zip files, one called rpi.zip and the other 2015-02-16 raspbianweezy.zip. Okay, so now let's navigate to our downloads folder and we'll see the files there. And firstly, we'll extract the one called rpi.zip. And if we take a look inside the folder, we'll see here the kernel file, which boots the Raspbian image I was talking about earlier. And then these three script files basically boot up the virtual machine. As we want all of our files in the same folder, we'll move the Raspbian file into here and then extract it. And once extracted, we can then delete the zip file to just clean up the folder. And then we want to rename the Raspberry Pi image to rpi.image. And the reason being is because the script file references it as that name, so we need to make it match. 
OK, so the next thing we need to do is to make sure that these scripts can be executed. And we do that by right-clicking them and then going to Properties, and then click on Permissions, then at the bottom where it says Execute, allow executing file as a program, make sure that's ticked. And just make sure you do this for each of the three different script files here. OK, so we have all our files we need. So let's do a bit of house cleaning again and just delete this zip file here. So now we've got all our files as we want them, let's move this RPI file from the downloads and put it into our home folder. OK, so now it's time to actually boot the Raspberry and image. So to do that we're going to have to open a terminal window and we just want to change directory to be into the RPI directory in our home folder. And because I'm lazy and can't be bothered to type, I just drag it into the terminal like that. And now we're in our RPI directory, we're going to actually run this script file here. So if we take a look at the script, we'll see in here that it loads the kernel that boots the Raspberry image, um, the Raspberry image being here, this part of the script, and it runs the ARM emulation here. And this part here is how much RAM the virtual machine's been assigned. Anyway, let's run the script. So just type dot forward slash then setup and hit enter. And that will start to boot us into the Raspberry image, but it will stop on a command prompt like here. And now to get it to boot properly, we first have to edit a few files in the Raspberry image. So type the following command, nano space forward slash etc forward slash ld dot so dot preload, and then hit enter. And here you'll see one line of text that we need to comment out. So to do that, just add a hash sign to the beginning. And to save the file, press Ctrl and O, and then press Enter. And then to exit out of this, press Ctrl and X. Right, and next we have to add a file. And to do that, we're going to type nano forward slash etc forward slash udev forward slash rules dot d forward slash nine zero hyphen qmu dot rules. And now into this blank space, you need to type the three lines that you'll see listed in the description. And they look like this. Just put them into here and then press Control and O and then press Enter. And then to exit this, again, press Control and X. Great, so that's our last edit we have to do. So now we can close our QMU window and then we can restart it using the other script that's just called Start here. And so to do that, we just type in dot, then forward slash, then start, and hit enter. And now this time, you see, we'll boot right up through to the Raspbian config screen. And once here on the config screen, let's move down to where it says advanced options, and hit enter. Then scroll down to where it says SSH, and hit enter again. And where it says enable, hit enter. And now where it says OK, hit enter again. And now all we have to do is to scroll down, then to move across to where it says finish and hit enter. OK, and so with the config done, we can start up the X server. So just for that, just type in start X. And that brings us into the familiar Raspberry Pi screen. So let's just try running a program. We'll start up a game. OK, we choose our sound, leave it as is. And let's give it a go, let's try Wormy. And this game is like the old time snake game. Um, I'm going to be pretty hopeless at it, I think. Anyway, it seems to be working absolutely fine. As you can see, the Raspberry Pi emulation is working great. And that's it, game over. OK, so now we'll just shut down the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll restart it with the SSH script and we'll be able to run programs on the Raspberry Pi from another computer. And we do that by this part here that redirects the SSH to port 2222. And what we need to know is we need to know the IP address of our Linux system. So for that just type in ifconfig and you can see here that my IP address is 10.10.20.21. So make a note of what your IP address is. So we need to CD into our RPI folder again. OK, and now let's run the start SSH script. So for that, type dot forward slash start SSH and hit enter. 
and let it boot up and now I'm just going to go across onto my MacBook Pro and I'm going to open the terminal window and now I'm going to make an SSH connection over to the Raspberry Pi that's running on the Linux VM and for that I'm going to type in SSH space hyphen P2222 so that's for port 2222 and then I'm going to put a hyphen X which then will allow us to run the graphical programs from the computer that's making the SSH connection. Now we put a space then the username pi at and the IP address that we got from the, our IF config command earlier mine's 10.10.20.21 press enter then type in yes and now we have to put in our password the standard username and password for the Raspberry Pi is username pi and password raspberry so now we're into the system so let's type in ls and list our files and now we'll go into the python games folder again and we'll run the same game as we did before we'll find wormy and run that so let's run this launcher script here and we'll leave the sound as is again and here's wormy and you can see it's running a lot slower than it was on the actual proper linux vm um, but that's to be expected but it still can be useful for some things. Anyway guys, that's how you emulate a Raspberry Pi using QMU and Linux. I myself are looking forward to when LimeTech put in the ARM emulation into Unraid. That's going to be pretty cool. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a play around with this and see what I can do with it. So guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, then please hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, then don't forget to subscribe. And anyway guys, I hope you all had a good Christmas and you're looking forward to a great new year. And I'll catch you all in that next video.